So this is going to be a little homework help with section 1.4. And while we go through it, we're also going to work on adding some stuff to our note card. So the first thing I want you to do is, get in, same with those of you at home, distance learning, we started a note card with you guys as well. Um, you're going to want to add, yesterday we put 1.3 on there. So you guys in here right now, you might want to go watch yesterday's to get what you need because you can use it on your test. You guys know that, right? So go to your note card. Do you have it? We started one. Do you have it that we started? Yeah. And you do two J's. And first thing is that, that I want you to put, and we try not to overcrowd the note card. So just the super important stuff. There's four ways to name an angle. So go ahead and write that, and then we'll go do number three together. So at least I'm not... And I want to give you extra examples. We'll take them right off the worksheet. <laughs> like, <laughs> looks great. All right. So four ways to name an angle. I'm going to go put one up here. I'm going to put three letters on it. Maybe cat. See, I hate cats, though. You guys like cats? I'm a dog person. Oh, you love them? I'm a dog person. I'm not a fan of cats, but I chose cat, so I'll stick with it. I'm also going to put a number in here. Just like over here, do you see? We're going to go do this one when I'm done. There's three letters that are naming the angle, and then they also put like a little one in there. So, do you need another blank sheet of paper? should be some out there. All right, so you can call this angle two. If there's a number in it, you can use it to name it. So let's go look at number three. What's one name for this angle? And we'll do it right off your worksheet. What's one name for this angle right here? Angle, go ahead, tell me guys. This one's angle two. What's this one? Angle, what number's in there? One. That's one of the ways. So that's, let me know if I'm going too fast, but this says um, name it three different ways. There's actually four ways, okay? Um, but let's actually just do the three because the fourth one doesn't work a lot. So we'll just do the three. Go we'll change that four to a three. All right. Another way you can name it is angle. And you have to put the vertex, this one where they meet right here, in the middle. So I can put the K in the middle. But, oh, sorry. This one would be an A. <laughs> so we're on your note card. I can put the A in the middle, and I can call it angle cat. I can also call it angle, and I can go the other direction. So I can either say, well, I'm going to go C, A, T, or I can go T, A, C, but you have to have that guy in the middle. So T, A, C. You good with that? So down here, who's in the middle for your homework? Who's in the middle on number three? Okay, put it in the middle. And then you can either go M, K, L. You have to put an angle sign in front of it, though. Or what do you think the other option is? Still have to have K in the middle. If I don't go M to K to L, how could I go? Perfect. L, K. And voice, does that make sense? All right. The other thing, guys, if it doesn't share, so I'm going to make sure I'm not going too fast, but if it if it's not shared with two angles, do you see how there's two angles in number three, but there's only one in number one? If it's only the one angle there, then you can also call it angle A. You can name it with its vertex. This one I can't because K is on three different angles actually so watch over here you can call this one angle b because there's only one angle there you can call the number two this angle g because there's only one angle there this guy i can't call angle k because i'm not sure if jace tells me i want you to measure angle k i'm like do you want me to do that one or do you want me to do that one or do you want me to do the whole thing okay 
So over here, this one can be called angle B, because if I say measure angle B, there's only one of them there. What else could you call it? I want you guys to write that down. You put the vertex in the middle, and then name it two other ways. That one didn't have a number in it, so I can't call it like angle 7. But you're writing it pretty fast, right, Lily? What are you writing there, kiddo? Angle A, C. Yep, and put the angle symbol in front of it. Or angle Okay, are we good with that? All right, so next on your note card, so you're back on your note card, okay? You need to know what these four are. If you already know, I wouldn't waste space on your note card. Jace, do you know what an acute angle is? Yeah. What is it? It's really small. It's less than 90 degrees. If you need to write that on your note card, go ahead. Acute less than 90. And you might want to box that in so you kind of know it's a definition. So if on your test it says, is this acute? You know, look. Kind of think a cute little angle. And this is going on your note card in blue here. Obtuse. Kind of think of obese or big. It's more than 90 degrees. They're cracked really wide open. How about a right angle, guys? Those are what? You know what a right angle is? It's like this. Nine. Those are exactly 90 degrees. Exactly. And then this straight angle might be new to you. Straight angle is like this guy right here. Look up at the board. What does a straight angle make? What does that? 180 degrees. Yeah, it's like in your car. If you do a 180 and you spin out, it's going the exact opposite direction. So for the straight, it looks like a line. But it's 180 degrees. Let me know when you guys have that written on your note card, and we'll go do three of these. Do you see how, what we're doing here? So that the kids at home, if they're stuck, they're like, oh, at least I can get a couple, and that should trigger the rest of this section. So, Lily, let me know when you're done writing that on your note card, and then we'll go pick three different kinds from here. Are you done? Eric, are you good, or am I going too fast? Oh, wait. And I only have a few of you here. It's easy to wait. All right, so those of you at home get kind of, I think we're going to stick with this system unless it doesn't work. Um, with the people here, we'll put stuff on our note card and go to the worksheet. For the people not here, you at least still have access to this. All right, so we are going to go take a look at number four together. So, Lily, I'm going to erase this blue line right here. And I think I'm going to put this down so it triggers red again. You put your pen on A. It triggered black. You put your pen on A. So I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to travel to F. Watch me travel to F. And then I'm going to shoot out to B. So angle A, F, B is this one right here. So you travel in order. All right? Then you're going to look at, is this acute or obtuse, that red one? It's acute. It's less than 90. So pick the number that's less than 90. It's showing that it's going through 50 and 130. Which one are you going to pick, the 50 or the 130? 50. Right, because I can see. Now, had it been this one, guys, watch. This is why the protractors have two of them on it, because had I said to go this way, you're still looking here, but then it's the bigger one. It's the 130. Do you see how you decide which number it is? Another way you can decide that, I'm going to go back. So Lily said what it was, but I'm going to go back over here. Wherever you shoot through zero, that's which one you read. And I'm zero's on the outside, so read the 50. We'll go try one more. Let's go from A to, no, oh, let's try B to F, to E. So watch when I go, or you can even do it on yours, but you start at B, you travel to F, and you go out to E. This is the angle, right? It's got two numbers with it, B to F to E. Is it the 50 or the 130? That one. 130 for two reasons. Zero's on the inside here, so read around on the inside, or because you just know it's the obtuse one. So for number nine, we would put 130. Does that make sense, guys? 
I don't think I'm going to do another one of those. You just measure them. All right. Next page. So flip it over. Back on your note card. You need to know what this symbol means. So we're going to put it on your note card. That symbol right there, the equals with a squiggle over it, means, back to the note card, congruent. Congruent, which means equal or the same. Sometimes, though, they don't tell you things are the same. They mark them as the same. So when you have a picture, I'm going to wait till you get that written down. I just want to make sure I don't go too fast. All right, Jay. So when it asks you who's this symbol to M-I-G, this is what you do. You travel over here. You put your pen on M. M is right here. You go to I. Which is right here and you go to G. You see how I found what angle it is? And you see how there's one, two, three arcs in here? The one that's the same will also have three arcs. That's how they tell, like on a picture, if you saw this Lily and then you saw this one with two, it means they're not the same. Even though they look the same, maybe this is like a little bigger. If you saw this with a single arc, it means they're the same. So that because the one that they gave me, the M-I-G, has three arcs in it, I need to name the other one with three arcs. So we're going to go right here. It's this guy. And remember, it's all about who's in the middle. Right? What letter has to be in the middle when I name it? I. Then you have two options, Eric. You can pick anything to the left of I or anything down here. You have lots of options. You could call it K-I-Q, you could call it J-I-H, or Q-I-J, as long as I is in the middle, and the other two are on the other side. So pick your favorite letter over here. I'm going to choose K, and then pick your favorite one on the other array. I'm going to choose, let's say, Q. But you understand there's more of them, right? And I'm going to put an angle in front of it, because it should have one. Let's go look at 14. Okay. So again, it's always about going from L. So I'm going to go over here and say, where's L? And then I'm going to go to M. Where's M? I'm going to go this way, right? And then I'm going to go up to P. Eric, you see how I figure out which angle they're talking about? It said L. So I put my pen here, and then I go to M, and then I go to P, just kind of like this is a map. And it's telling me that's 100 degrees. So right in here, those two arcs is 100 degrees. Does that make sense? It asks me for angle Q. So let's go look at it. H, G. But what did I tell you these double arcs mean? They're the same. So what's your answer, Eric, for number 14? 100, excellent. All right. We're almost done. I'm only going to do um, one more. So down here. We're going to do number 20, but we have to go put something on our half card first. Then when we're done, I'm going to have you guys see if you can sort of cruise through and get as much done as you can on it. But back to the note card before we talk about this one. On your note card, I want you to write this. Angle. Addition. Postulate. It doesn't really matter that you don't know what that word means. I'm sure they told you in your notes. But if they say use the angle addition postulate, here's what it says. I'll let you get it written. We're going to draw an angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to slice it. So we're going to make two angles out of one angle. I'm going to put a dot over here, a dot over here down over there. It's really simple because it says this. If Jace measures this angle um, 1 to be 20 degrees and angle 2 to be 40 degrees, then through the whole way across, which I'm going to call angle 3, you just add them up. 
So it says this, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the whole way across. And I helped them yesterday with the segment addition postulate. So if you were stuck on 1.3, we did this, what we're doing right now, but with the 1.3. All right, are you ready? Let me know when you're done writing that on your note card. It basically says you need to add up to get all the way across. And that's it for the note card. Are we good? Can I erase it? Yeah. All right. So watch. First of all, it says here, F. H, you always have to read all this, F to H to I, that's this whole way across, is 142. Agreed? Now watch, let's go over to 21 and we take a look at this one. Ready? I'm not done with that yet, but it says J, K, L is a right angle. So what is it all the way across if it's a right angle? 90. Okay, so even though they didn't tell you how many degrees this one was, it said a right angle. So now watch. The angle addition postulate says that this one, right here, which they labeled as 3x plus 6. And then the other piece which would be this one, which they labeled as 9x minus 8. The two pieces, this piece and this piece, have to add up to the whole way across. What they tell you this whole way across is 142. And then it's going to go to algebra, so let's see how your algebra is. And then we have to make sure we answer the question, and then that's all I'm doing with you today. So if you have to solve this, we have to figure out what x is. We are going to need to get them together. So the first thing we need to do is get the 3x's with the 9x's. 9 plus 3 is 12, so we have 12 x's. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Then I have positive 6 and I'm dropping 8. Here if you don't call that a 14, right? If you have 6 and you drop 8, where are you? 2. Am I going too fast, guys, or am I good? Jeez, how do I solve this for x? Add 2, and I get 144, so I get 12x. I'm going to go up here. I get 12x equals 144. And then how do I solve it? Divide by 12. 144 divided by 12 is 12. Be careful. Do you guys have to enter these in Schoology, or do you take a picture and send it in? Either. Be careful you don't enter a 12 in Schoology because that's not what it asks for. If you go take a look at what it asks for, it doesn't say what's X. It says what's the measure of FHG. So what do you need to do with the X? I got a 12 for X, but there's not an X in here. I do. I, if you can't hear her from home, she said you have to fill in for the X. So this would be 3 times 12 because that's what we got X to be, 36 plus 6. So this guy, 36 plus 6, is 42. And also ask for this guy, though. So you also have to go put that 12 in here. Do you have a calculator out by any chance? Oh, I want to do it in my head. 9 times 12 minus 8. Actually, I know what it's going to be because it's the rest of what's left. And I'll let you guys wrap that one up. And then go back, you guys, and work from the front forward. So tomorrow I want you to see what you're missing and work on that. And I'm going to have videos for each of the sections. Right now I just have one, three, one, four in there. And then um, you'll be working on one, five today, but I will post that till Monday. Does that make sense? I think it'll be helpful for you. But take the last, how much time do I have left? Five minutes, go back to the front side or one of the others. Hey, this should go pretty fast. Go at least take care of number two, go measure some angles. They're not super long assignments, so all right, I'm gonna stop.